What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mess Hall. Welcome to Mess Hall Digs. On this episode, I want to try and help you lock down a solid strategy that's going to help you when you're out there sourcing for goods to sell on your favorite marketplaces. It's all about education, research, and execution of that education and research to help you become a better reseller. I'm here to do that. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now, this is Mess Hall Diggs, and you guessed it. I'm your boy, Mess Hall. This is your first time uh, clicking on my little thumbnail joint and saying, what's this dude all about? Well, I'm a part-time reseller. I have a full-time job, and I got a full-time family. Now, full-time family, is that a thing? Probably not, but it is now. We talk about reselling stuff. We on Poshmark, eBay, Macari, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. It's my side hustle. I make extra income every month selling other people's trash. That's what I do. Now, what I need you to understand is no matter what niche or niche or niche or nichache you're into, just apply the knowledge I be spitting and use that knowledge and drop it into your little bundles of joy love baskets and apply it to yourself because you might be into something completely different than I'm into. I mostly sell shoes and hats and clothes, things like that. Those are the things I'm into. That's what I spend my time educating myself on, researching, and I have experience in those areas. So that's what I look for when I'm out there in the field looking for stuff. Now you might be into other things like these cute little gnome guys. Now these gnome dudes are like a craftable person's dream. If you're into crafty stuff, you can develop a system something like this. You can create little cute gnome dudes. You could put little Easter bunny ears on it or Santa Claus hats and you can sell these on Etsy and make great money. Now. You may not know how much these go for, or if even if it's even worth exploring that option, but it is an option. If it's something you're good at, put your skills to the test and make money. That's what we're talking about. Maybe you're into candles. You know all about candles, like this one. This is the Blue Hawaii Bath and Body Works Edition. Now you might say, ooh, that's the Blue Hawaii 2016 summer release. They're only 4,000 made and they're worth about $30. I wouldn't know that. How I pick my candles is I take the top off. Oh, that smells pretty good. I purchase the item, I bring it home and I fire up. Makes my office smell good. That's my candle knowledge. Speaking of candles, you may not know this, but Gwyneth Paltrow, who's a famous actress, she has a line of candles that she released. And if you're under the age of 18, this is the time that I need you to put your earmuffs on. Plug your ears, la la la, you can't hear me right now. But she released a candle that is titled, Smells Like My Vagina. It's a fact, you can look it up. And these things sold out. And right now, you can find these candles going for $150 in some cases for a candle. So hey, that might be a niche you want to get into. Make your own candles at home. Sell them on Etsy. Or you could be a DVD movie type person. So I see guys all the time digging through every DVD that's at the Goodwill. They got their little chair that they stole from the furniture side of Goodwill. They, they slid it on over and sat it in front of the DVDs and they're just digging through them one by one by one. Now DVDs is something that doesn't interest me. But what does interest me is when I'm searching for something like this. This is the Married with Children box set. Complete every single episode of my favorite show of all time. So I went on eBay and looked around to find this box set and I purchased it. So there is a market for it. Because people like, yeah, boy, was looking for stuff like this. 
So it doesn't matter what niche you're in. Maybe you're into electronics or gaming or stuff like that. All I'm telling you to do is to educate yourself, do your research, narrow down what you really want to get into, and that's the strategy number one that you need to go use as ammunition when you're out there sourcing because you'll have a leg up on everybody else. Uh, I'll give you another example. Uh, there's a YouTuber called Crazy Lamp Lady. Now, she's awesome. My wife watches her. I watch her. She's into stuff that I don't give a crap about. I don't care. I've never looked for anything even comparable to what she's looking for. But she's all into this stuff. She held up something one time, and it looked like an ashtray shaped like a dinosaur's foot. Now, I had no idea what it was, but she knew what it was. She's like, oh, this is a replica of Copernicus's helmet made by famous Polish sculptor Szykolowski. And the original was made in 1964. And since this is a remake of that sculpture, it'll probably sell for about 85 bucks. Let's see how much it is. Oh my God, it's only 99 cents. Score! All right, so now we have our niche. We know what we like. We, we have our passion, things that we're into. We have some education. We've done some research. Now it's time to go out there in the field and try to resource and source some inventory that we can put online for sale and try to make some extra money. Now what I use is I use a little bit of trial and error, some experience. I do educate myself. There are certain things that I take into mind when I'm out there looking for things. Like I said, I'm, in, I'm into shoes. Uh, some kind, sometimes t-shirts, like jackets, hoodies, hats, and that's about it. It's, it's pretty much clothing items. It's one of the hardest categories to really get into because there's a lot of competition because it is the easiest stuff to find. When I'm at yard sales, I stick to my plan. I always go for shoes first. Then I go look at a couple t-shirts here and there. If something really stands out, I'll always look it up. Then I hit hoodies and jackets. And that's about it. I'm up out of there, man. I don't spend a whole lot of time in the stores anymore because I want to open up as many opportunities as I can. I'll go to Goodwill. I have two Goodwills around my city. I'll hit both Goodwills up. I'll hit the neighborhood thrift store up that's family owned. I'll hit up Salvation Army. I'll run through TJ Maxx, Ross. I'll go to Marshalls. And I'm home in like three hours. I mean, that's it. I, I can I can do hit up all my spots in three hours because I've narrowed down my niche to those three or four particular categories that I really love and I've studied and I really know about. And those are the ones I stick to and I get my strategy together. And if I even are short on time, there's been times where I'll be on lunch break. I know I only got 30 minutes. I'll just pick one thing. Okay, I'm gonna scan all the shoes at this one. I'm gonna drive over to the other one, scan all the shoes there, grab me a burger, and then I'm back at work. It's all about strategizing and getting your things together before you even leave the house. Uh, just a couple more tips on uh, on shoes if you decide to get into shoes. Um, colors are important. Uh, when it comes to just casual shoes or dress shoes, I always stick to like neutral colors, black, beige, white, things that will match any outfit that you're gonna wear. When it comes to like sports shoes, running shoes, basketball shoes, colorways are pretty much obsolete. You can go with the crazier the color, the better especially with running shoes. I've sold a lot of crazy color running shoes. I know they say um, red and blue are kind of the, the least popular colors when it comes to shoes. I haven't really found that to be the case. Um, I know they came out with an article, Esquire, came out with the article, the ugliest shoes released in the last 20 years. And of course, one of my favorite shoes of all time was on that list. So I, I disregard that list anyway. Uh, I remember Reebok and Pharrell and Ice Cream, they did a collab back in 2001. They came out with all these crazy colorway sneakers. I owned every single one of them. They're one of my favorite shoes ever released. Um, so colorways aren't really that important. Sizes, I try to stick with somewhere between 8 and 13 for men and 7 to 10 for women. I have sold some women's shoes that were size 11 before. I sold some men's shoes that were size 14, but very rarely. Um, when it comes to clothing, I only stick to large to 3XL. Those are the only shirts I go through. 
So when I go to the racks, I start with large, I work my way up to 3X, and that's pretty much it. I don't really mess with small and mediums anymore. Uh, this is from experience. I tend to sell more bigger sizes, bigger sizes, more sought after. Uh, plus I wear a 2XL, so it's kind of my comfort zone. I can pick up a 2XL shirt and I'll know that that's a 2XL. It'll fit me, I know it'll fit the customer that wears a 2XL. Uh, and then hats are just whatever, man. Hats, hats is such a big, broad category. I have so many different styles. It's just kind of I look at for the coolest hat with the popular name or logo on it, and I, and I snatch it up if it's a good price. Uh, the last kind of strategy on this list. Now, remember, this is just me. I'm just one person. It's my opinion, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. And remember, just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it's not going to work for you. But I did want to give you some things that I used to buy and because they've been slow movers, they haven't really sold for me. I've kind of cut them off. I won't buy them anymore. And uh, just give you some general direction when you're looking at shirts or whatever clothes. Just in my experience, what hasn't sold that well. Uh, starting off number one, uh, Nautica was one of my favorite brands back in high school. Um, but it's not really that popular much anymore. Uh, there was a collab that Little Yachty did with Nautica. I had a couple pieces from that collection that did sell really well. But other than that, Nautica just kind of sits around. And it's not worth getting a Nautica track jacket for $4.99 at the Goodwill and waiting three months to finally sell it for $12. Bucks. I mean, I just I stopped doing it. Um, and it's hard because I love the brand. They have some cool pieces, but it's just not a big seller for me, so I stopped buying them. Another one on my list is anything Levi's, except for like 501 button fly jeans, and of course the, the Levi denim jacket, which is iconic. Those are pretty much the only two Levi products I'll ever pick up. I leave the Levi shoes alone. Uh, Levi t-shirts I leave those alone you know it just it just doesn't sell plus you can find that stuff at like Kohl's anyway uh, and that brings me to my next one if it's a shirt you can buy at Old Navy like I pick on Old Navy a lot but it's just funny to me Old Navy Target Walmart they all have these graphic tees Kohl's they sell these graphic t-shirts that are like remakes of popular bands or popular products uh, here's an example um, of a shirt, a couple shirts that you can find at Target right now. Here's one. It's a, a Nirvana graphic t-shirt. Now it's a reprint, a remake. It's, it's sold at Target. You might find this on a rack and get excited at first because you know Nirvana is a popular band. Band tees are popular. But this particular band tee is a remake. You can find this shirt at Target for $12. The biggest thing to look out for is the uh, size tag. It's usually screen printed on. It's not an actual tag that you can tug on. It's a screen print tag and it'll say Nirvana or it'll say like Teespring or whatever. Stay away from those. Um, the, Walmart's the same thing. I know they have Space Jam shirts at Walmart. Here's a Space Jam shirt. Now it's if it's a Space Jam shirt from when the movie came out back in the 90s, it's an original Space Jam release and it has the tag made in USA. Yes, that's a pickup because that's an original. This vintage is going to be worth money. But these remakes like this one at, from Walmart, it's a $12 t-shirt at Walmart. So I'm not going to be able to sell a used one for big money when someone can just walk into Walmart and buy this shirt brand new for $12. So unless it's a collab... Um, kind of like this one, if you don't know the brand Kith, it's one of those Hypebeast brands. Kith did a Looney Tunes release. Uh, here's an example of the Kith Looney Tunes release, which was a collab. Looks like this one. Now this shirt, if you find a Kith Looney Tunes shirt out there in the field, that's a $200 t-shirt. So you got to know the difference. You got to learn the different styles. You got to learn what Walmart and Target and Kohl's are all selling these knockoff remake reprint shirts that just aren't going to be worth a lot of money because people are smart. They know they can go on Target.com 
and get that same shirt you're trying to sell to them for cheaper than what you want to get for it used and they can buy it brand new. Uh, so look out if it's a collab, kind of like the shirt I'm wearing. It's a Mike Tyson Chinatown Market collab. Now this shirt, this is a $75 shirt if you can find it. So hopefully uh, this all helped you out a little bit. Uh, I thank you so much for joining me. Please like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or comments or I can help you in any way, just, just leave me a comment. Send me an email. Like I said before, thanks for joining me again. All peace and love. Go out there. Good luck to you. Find a niche. Educate yourself. Do your research. And I'll see you on the next one. Yay!